Earth Vault Protection. The next one in the queue. I know it's not the next one in the line here, but it's probably the next most common feature that's used within the reclosers. So I will dedicate this video to getting that right. So the Earth Vault Protection, in terms of configuration, is incredibly similar to the way that you do overcurrent uh, protection configuration too. You also have this reclose map, so if you wanted to do fast and slow trips, that's when you'd use the EF2 and EF1 elements, and EF3 is your high current version of that Earth Fault Protection. Clicking the end here is what's going to polarize those settings, so if you want the directional Earth Fault Protection, then that's what you use in order to convert an element from being magnitude-based only through to being a directional uh, element. So what I might do is just with this one, again, just demonstrate I'll save that there, and we'll hop into EF1, and we'll see here that you can then just configure each of the curves that you need for that EF1 element. So you'll see here we've got Earth Vault Curve, Group 1, EF. Over here is elements 1, 2, and 3, and then 1, 2, and 3 for the reverse direction if you choose to use them. Um, and what you can do is simply step through each of the individual components of your configuration that you need to make. So you can select your curve. Let's say that we wanted a, an IEC extremely inverse curve. Uh, let's say a pickup current 240 amps, time multiplier of 0.7, and you can set definite minimum time. Say you needed it for some coordination reason, 50 milliseconds is your minimum operating time, and then a max stripping time, uh, which is two minutes by default. That would be a fairly uncommon scenario that you're going to have an asphalt that's going to last for two minutes before you operate on it, but you can set a ceiling to it, which you can see there reflected in the curve configuration. Once you're happy with your curve configuration, you just click OK to commit it to the settings file, and you'll see that those get saved automatically when you click OK uh, to commit it. If you cancel it, then it will remove those as we go. So. Any modifications that you make here will also uh, indicate that there have been unsaved changes made on the protection group, and that is signified by this little, little asterisk over here. So um, if ever that shows up, you can either choose to save, or you can do my other favorite method of doing this, which is the close to save, where if there are any changes present, you hit the close button, and it will prompt you, do you want to save the changes? So I'm just going to cancel out of that, and we'll hop back here. What else that I didn't cover in the previous configuration is that you also have access to this ability to do alarms. So for the different elements that you see in our protection configuration, you have this little A value here that you can use. So that A will cause the device to send an alarm or flag an alarm when your protection element times out, but it won't actually cause any operations of the breaker. So that can be useful, particularly when you're introducing new features that you haven't used before, that you can set the breaker to alarm. Plausibly, you could map that back through SCADA so that you can use it for further automation um, or manual operation. But uh, it's a good way to introduce those elements without the risk of doing spurious tripping. All right, so with the directional protection for Earth Fault as well, there is an additional complicating factor here, or really, it's added flexibility. So down below, here is your directional element configuration for it. And we also introduced this idea of advanced polarization detection. In this context, for the earth fault protection, really what it does is it gives you this ability to set a maximum and minimum forward angle. Conventional earth fault protection means that anything 90 degrees either side of absolute forward is going to be considered the forward direction. But for earth faults, you might want to be more specific as to what is clearly a forward earth fault, because the different scenarios within your network that you might have additional capacitance or inductance that shifts that might imply that your forward condition is only within a 60 degree window or maybe even less. So having this advanced polar de polarization detection configuration below, it gives you this capacity to reduce or increase that operating window to mean that you get better specificity with your protection. You can also add a minimum polar neutral voltage displacement threshold. So this is a threshold that is required for earth faults because it is the driving force for an earth fault that stipulates at what level you actually need to block or operate based on uh, your earth fault detection. So at 0.1 per unit, that's a 0.1 multiplier of your neutral um, of your primary voltage, and that will block or allow the system to operate based on that 
uh, configuration by itself. So if you need that additional uh, granularity when it comes to configuring your protection directional earth faults, then all of that functionality is available here too.